Yeah, I see him. Let's get some shots. Hopefully he's gonna switch over to these nuts in a second. I ain't got a good shot on him, dude. Yeah, he's yeah, shooting these nuts. We got him. Nice. Two of us now. You watch that door, I got this. Okay. Yo, 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 guys. So I'm just having a little look at the Rainbow Six Siege footage from the Xbox oh, no, One beta that happened about a week and a half ago. We're going to be discussing how I feel about it and where I think it fits in in this renaissance of FPS games yeah, that everyone yeah. loves so much. Is it a Call of Duty Twitch shooter or is it a more tactical, large scale? Battlefield right here, kind of situation. Right so like Call of Duty Black Ops or Destiny say, you do have special classes. You've got however many attackers and then however many specialist defenders. This doesn't mean that every single one of them has their own unique guns. You can have the same gun on many specialists and have the same loadout if you wish, but some of them exclusively will only use a shotgun and a smaller sidearm, while others will have an assault rifle and then maybe an SMG as their pistol. Or you can choose it anyway. So the basic setup is you'll be attacking and then next round you'll be defending and then attacking again and then defending until one of you hits three wins. So when you're attacking, your whole team will choose your specialist, choose your loadout and choose where you want to be placed on the map to begin this round. Then you go in with your RC cars and I found this very cool. You roll in and you have to split up and find right, where the choose. enemy is defending because they also get to choose where they defend. An additional note is if you do have a five-man squad, it's very nice when you're rolling in your RC cars, one person calls to go upstairs, another one downstairs, and then the others go yeah, left and right, and you can get the whole building upstairs. surveyed. Yeah. Hold Y when you see enemy, I'll tell you. This means if you find where the defensive location is, you will be able to rappel up the wall, maybe one person smash through the window, over the headset, you're communicating with your team for someone to storm the front door and the other window, putting the defense into a frenzy while you mop up the situation and win the round. More often than not, you will find even random players have pretty good tactics because everything's very simple. Repelling is just A or B when you go up to a wall and then B to switch your orientation so you can hang upside down only poking your head out from one of the windows. Very cool stuff like that. Now let's talk about the defending side. So while the attacking side are using their little RC cars to try and find out where the defensive squad are, the defensive squad will be reinforcing walls. Something important to note is that if you're a recruit, you will only have one reinforced wall. These are like big reinforcements. I mean, it's very difficult to get through these things, if not impossible. I think there is one specialist who has the ability to get through these walls. So you set up your defenses. Again, you've got specialists who can do certain things. I bought a specialist who could plant these sticky things on walls that would stop grenades coming through, which is very nice. I really felt like I was helping my team out with that. When you place it right. Other people have mini walls that can be put down exclusively in front of them or sometimes very nicely positioned on stairs making it so you have to jump over it and you can just mow them down. In that scenario I was actually killing myself. I was jumping over the wall and shooting myself so it's a bit of a weird one. So the pros to this game is how simple it is. You can get involved and you don't need a whole team as I've said before. You can go in on your own and learn the ropes within a few games and you'll be pretty alright at attacking or defending. You'll be able to hold your own. Secondly, it's got a lovely balance between a twitch shooter and a more tactical standoffish game. You don't have to go in there and kill everybody on your own. You have got a team even if you're not on the mic with them and it's random people. The team will help even if it's causing a distraction. Oh my goodness who did that? Another one is how nice this game looks and the destructible environment, such a breath of fresh air, it's just so cool to feel like you've actually got powerful explosives, guns that can hit through walls yeah, and then take someone thing. out, and then if your team have got all the doors secured and they're about to breach, you can make your own line of sight through a plywood wall. And the final pro, I know I've said this a lot, but it is the teamwork, you don't need to have a team to have a good time on this, I had a great time. I think I was only ever in a team of one or maybe two more members twice. The rest of the time was solely playing on my own and it was still a lot of fun. I still felt like tactics was going off even though I wasn't talking to these people. Points where someone with a shield was walking in front of me and I would hang behind them and use them as cover as the shield should actually be. With saying that, let's move over to the cons because the shield is my biggest annoyance of this fucking game. You ha. 
Just people, it just pisses me off. People rolling around with a shield and you're like, oh, they've got a shield, I better be careful. Oh, wait, I'm dead because they've also got a pistol with incredibly high accuracy from firing technically from the hip. they just got their arm hanging out the side of a freaking shield like, pa 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 dead. dead. Like that, to me, it's just, it's just so cheap. Like ramming people with a shield can sometimes get a little bit annoying because if you're in a tight corridor... And let's face it, in this game, you will be in tight corridors. You aren't going to be able to run around this person and shotgun him. They will just stand in front of you and shoot the fuck out of you. Sometimes I've been lucky enough to get a wild place Semtex to just throw it and then explode it when it's over their head. But I shouldn't be doing that to take out people with shields. And they've got armor on. And they've got a pistol hanging out the side of their fucking shield. I want it to be their exclusive shield users. The shield in the game is fine. And actually, someone I was playing with had a really good point that the shield should be breakable. There should always be something on the other side that can combat the shield. So if you've got two shield guys on the opposite team, well, we've got two shotgun guys. And after they hit that bad boy twice, your shield will be damaged to the point where it won't fully protect you and any gun will do damage to you. Yeah, you'll still have it up to your face and you'll still take more bullets than you normally would, but some of those bullets will get through. But the second con, again, is a big one. For me personally, the longevity of this game is in question for me. Like, I don't know how long this game will actually last. I don't want to pre-order it, even though I think it is an excellent game and executed beautifully for casual players and the hardcore veterans of this series. It just... It feels like I'd have this game for maybe two or three weeks and then all the community would be dead. You'd need friends to be able to really get any good games out of this. The matchmaking in the bait was shocking. It was absolutely sh I spent hours sitting in the lobby waiting for people to come along just for a whole team to come along who's a clan against me and one other guy. Two versus five. Two versus... And that's where this all spawned from of the longevity of this game. Is it going to turn into only the hardcore fans play this game and you will get fucking trashed if you ain't got a team? Or will it get to the point where just nobody's playing this game after four months of buying it? So, speaking of longevity, what else have we got on this game to play with? There are several game modes, and another one that I particularly enjoyed was the Your Team Real People versus the AI. No contact yet. Oh, jeez. Head down. Get in the freaking bathroom. Got the magnum out. Got the magnum out. Show your face. Show your face. Oh, fuck. He showed his face. One thing I definitely cannot wait to see is some videos pop up on YouTube when this game comes out of perfectly oiled up teams, like gears, like perfect little gears, all spinning in unison, just knowing exactly how to attack or exactly how to defend. I cannot wait for those videos, and I really love the whole concept. But for me personally, my verdict is I'm going to wait. And there's no way I'm pre-ordering this game. There's no way I'm buying it day one. I will wait to see if the community thrives and then maybe jump on board at a later date because the physics are there, the graphics are there and the gameplay is a lovely balance I can play this when I'm a little bit more tired like Call of Duty there's times where I'm like I can't play this game, Like it's, it's just so intense if you, you know, you're sweating it even if you don't want to sweat it you're just like, fuck it, here we go then, fuck that guy you know, I just turn crazy anyway, I've just been rappling on for so long now I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it just showed you a bit of extra footage that maybe you're still on the fence about it let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.